Welcome to our lecture on the historical development and contributions of scientists in veterinary pharmacology. For the background, pharmacology in recent forms is considered to be a relatively recent branch of medicine. But pharmacology existed in one or the other form since the dawn of civilization. Throughout recorded history, mankind has employed drug substances for treating diseases as well as for social and religious purposes. In this presentation, we will try to enlist some important scientists and scholars who have contributed in the field of veterinary pharmacology. The oldest writings of medicinal agents belong to ancient India, closely followed by the Chinese and Egyptian literatures. The oldest system of medicine was recorded in India and that is from 4000 to 600 BC, known as the Ayurveda. Ayurveda recommends herbal medicines and animal origin products for treatment of disease in man and animals. The pioneering personalities under this include Charaka, Susruta, and Bhagbata. This is Charaka and he is considered to be the father of Indian medicine. In modern world, Charaka is considered as complementary and alternative medicine. In China, we have Ben Chao, which is considered to be the earliest written compilation of drugs uh, and is classified as a Chinese herbal formulary or Materia Medica. So again, when we say Materia Medica, that it is a branch of medical science that deals with the sources, nature, properties, and preparation of drugs. So this uh, earliest compilation contains many vegetables, metallic and animal products that are used as remedies. And this is written by Emperor Shenu in 2700 BC. In Egypt, we have Gahun Papyrus, and this is considered as the oldest record of Egyptian drug codification in 2000 BC. It deals with veterinary medicine and uterine disease of women and contains several prescriptions. An important figure at this time is Hippocrates, and he is a Greek physician and a great teacher of medicine. He advocated little use of drugs, maintained very high ethical standards of practice, and attempted to treat diseases based on four elements of nature, the water, fire, air, and earth. He is considered to be the father of medicine, and he was the first person to recognize disease as an abnormal condition of the body, rather than as a visitation from evil spirits or witches. We also have Pidanius Dioscorides, which is a Greek physician and pharmacologist who worked on the first Materia Medica, the Materia Medica, known as the foremost classical source of modern botanical terminology and the leading pharmacological text for 16 centuries. We also have Claudius Galen. So Galen was the originator of the experimental method in medical investigation and throughout his life, dissected animals in his quest to understand how the body functions. Galen was also the first physician to use the pulse as a sign of illness. Another important figure is Aristotle. He is a Greek philosopher and scientist who distinguished about 500 species of birds, mammals, and fishes in history of animals and parts of animals. His system of classification, one of the earliest in scientific taxonomy, was influential for over 2,000 years. Another is Theophrastus, a Greek philosopher and natural scientist known as the father of pharmacognosy. He classified medicinal plants based on their medicinal characteristics. We also have Ajibur Ebn Hajar, an influential Persian writer who classified drugs and poisons of his time and stated the difference between a drug and a poison was just a matter of dosage. He stated that any drug can be toxic if given large enough amounts. Another is Paracelsus, who was a German-Swiss physician, pioneered the use of chemicals and minerals for treating diseases. He gave the great statement, all substances are poisons, there is none which is not a poison. The right dose differentiates a poison and a remedy. Valerius Cordus was a German physician and botanist who compiled the first pharmacopoeia and carefully described techniques 
to be employed in the preparation of drugs. During the 17th and 18th centuries, drug trade flourished and medical experimentation began. So drugs like cinchona, coffee tea, uh, cocoa, curare, digitalis, and variety of alkaloids were discovered. One of the important personalities at this time was William Withering. So he was uh, an English physician best known for his use of extracts of foxglove, digitalis purpurea, to treat dropsy or edema. His insights on the medical uses of foxglove proved crucial to modern understanding of heart failure, and today, drugs containing digitalis are still prescribed. So in the year 1785, Withering published an account of the foxglove and some of its medical uses. He also invented the botanical microscope. Another scientist is Edward Jenner. He discovered and established the principle of prophylactic immunization against smallpox and was the first to describe anaphylaxis. So again, when we say anaphylaxis, it is a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. Jenner set the stage for later development of preventive medicine and immunological therapy. We also have William Harvey. He discovered the circulation of the blood and indicated the drugs were distributed to various body parts via the blood. Another is Christopher Wren. He was a great English architect who made the first IV intravenous injection of drugs into a dog, although it was not until 1853 that the hypodermic needle and syringe was devised by Alexander Wood. We also have Friedrich Sir a German pharmacist who was the first to isolate morphine from opium. He called the isolated alkaloid morphium after the Greek god of dreams Morpheus. Another is Claude Bernard, a French physiologist considered as the father of experimental medicine for his use of scientific methods and experiments in medicine. He was mainly known for discoveries on the role of pancreas in digestion, glycogenic function of the liver, as well as the regulation of the blood supply by the vasomotor nerves. Claude Bernard, together with James Blake, established the foundations of modern pharmacology. They worked on those response relationship, drug disposition in the body, mechanism of action of drugs, as well as the structure-activity relationship, or the SAR. We also have Rudolf Bachheim, a German pharmacologist who established the first laboratory devoted exclusively in the study of pharmacology. So was considered to be the originator of experimental pharmacology also. He is regarded as the modern, or the father of modern pharmacology and introduced animal testing and research in mechanisms of drug effects. Another important figure is Oswald Smidebridge, a German pharmacologist who studied the action of muscarine and nicotine, digotoxin, hypnotics, and analeptics. He was the first to introduce the concept of pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of a drug. We also have John Newport Langley, Langley is known as uh, one of the fathers of the chemical receptor theory and is the origin of the concept of receptive substance. In 1901, he advanced research in neurotransmitters and chemical receptors, working with extracts from the adrenal glands. These extracts elicited responses in tissues similar to those induced by nerve stimulation. We also have John Jacob Abel, John Jacob Abel is considered to be the father of American pharmacology and uh, he was the first to isolate you know, a blood pressure raising substance from bovine adrenal glands, which uh, the substance he called epinephrine. He became the first person to crystallize insulin in the year 1925 and he was also invented a primitive artificial kidney and isolated epinephrine. He also founded repeated journals like uh, Journal of Biological Chemistry and Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics. We also have Hans H. Mayer, a German pharmacologist who discovered the importance of glucuronic acid, 
as a reaction partner for drugs and the mode of action of tetanus toxin in the body. The mayer overton hypothesis on the mode of action on general anesthetics is partially named after him. We also have Sir Henry H. Dale, an English pharmacologist and physiologist, who was credited for his study of acetylcholine as an agent in the chemical transmission of nerve impulses and uh, earning him the 1936 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine together with Otto Lewy. We also have Frederick Banting and Charles Best. So we have here uh, Frederick Banting and Charles Best. So in the early 1920s, Frederick Banting and Charles Best discovered insulin you know, under the directorship of John McLeod at the University of Toronto. With the help of James Collip, insulin was purified, making it available for the successful treatment of diabetes. Banting and McLeod earned a Nobel Prize for their work in the year 1923. Another is Alexander Fleming. So he was a Scottish bacteriologist, best known for his discovery of penicillin in the year 1928, which started the antibiotic revolution. For his discovery of penicillin, he was awarded a share of the 1945 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. You also have Gerard Dumock, a German bacteriologist and pathologist who was awarded the 1939 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for his discovery of the antibacterial effects of Prontosil. Prontosil was the first of the sulfonamide drugs. We also have uh, Albert Scatz. So this is Albert Scatz and Salman Waxman and Elizabeth Bucci. They discovered streptomycin, the first effective antibiotic against tuberculosis. Salman Waxman was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1952 for this discovery. Another is Raymond Alquist, an American pharmacist and pharmacologist. He published seminal work in 1948 that divided adrenoceptors into alpha and beta adrenoceptor subtypes. This discovery explained the activity of several existing drugs and laid the groundwork for new drugs, including the widely prescribed beta blockers. We also have Earl W. Sutherland Jr. investigated how hormones, especially adrenaline, work. Around 1960, he showed how CAMP serves as a secondary messenger within the cell. He earned the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in the year 1971 for his discoveries concerning the mechanisms of the action of hormones. We also have Paul von Euler. Euler's outstanding achievement was his identification of noradrenaline or norepinephrine, the key neurotransmitter in the sympathetic nervous system. He also found that norepinephrine is stored within nerve fibers themselves. Euler also discovered hormones known as prostaglandins. Another is L. Mayer Jones, regarded as the father of modern veterinary pharmacology. He authored the first edition of Veterinary Pharmacology and Therapeutics in the year 1954. Another is George H. Hitchings, Sir James W. Black, and Gertrude B. Ellion. They earned the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1988 for their, work, for their discoveries of the important principles of drug treatment. Alfred G. Gilman and Martin Rod Bell earned the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the 1994 for their discovery of G proteins and the role of these proteins in signal transduction in cells. From left to right, we also have Farid Murad, Louis Gnaru, and Robert Farchlot earned the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in the year 1998 or their discoveries concerning nitric oxide as a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system. We also have Barry Marshall and Robin Warren. The Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was jointly awarded to them for their discovery of the bacterium Helicobacter pylori and its role in gastritis and peptic ulcer. In summary, 
the development of veterinary pharmacology is the same as that of humans. Through much of medical history, little distinction was made between human and animal medicine, and both professions share common roots. But near the beginning of the 20th century, the two professions and their schools separated and developed independently. Since this time, a lag has existed between human and veterinary medicine due to differences in size and economic factors. As with most aspects of veterinary medicine, veterinary pharmacology has lagged its human counterpart by several years. Today, however, veterinary pharmacology is a vital part of veterinary medical education and research.